Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. In this special episode, we recently ventured to Regina, Saskatchewan for the 2024 SUMA Convention. Though this episode may be briefer than our standard episodes, its significance remains undiminished. We'll be right back after a quick message with Cross Border Interviews featuring Councillor Tara Montaigne of the City of Melford. <laughs> Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Perfect. Uh, Councillor, thank you so much for doing this. I want to start by asking a simple question, but an overarching one. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Tara? I don't think I can say just one thing. There's a passion for where you live. I'm actually originally from Ontario. <gasps> where in Ontario? Port Hope, Ontario. It's an hour east of Toronto. Newcastle. Shut Not up. even joking. Like, maybe that's why we were drawn. Holy crap. That's like, like almost next door. It's like Newcastle, Newtonville. No, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Newcastle, Newtonville, welcome. Port yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I lived on Lakeshore Road, which is in Welcome. Lakeshore like, Road, too. Shut Not even joking. I mean, you're kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> we were seriously drawn then. When did you move out here? Wow. I actually moved out here in 90... Okay, way past my... <laughs> okay, yeah, 93, 92, 93, 94, somewhere in there. That is freaky. <laughs> this... This is going to be the best. Okay, this is all staying in, FYI. Okay. <laughs> so you moved from Port Hope, which, yes. God bless it, to. Yeah, and Port, you know, Port Hope, exactly. It's a beautiful yep. S- town. Yep. It's a town there. Not um, it is a, a county. Town. Oh, yeah, it's, it is a town because it has a mayor and council, yes. Affirmative. But um, there was no opportunities for me. Yeah. I moved out here when I was 20, um, to, and I came to visit. Um, my mom lives in Melfort, so I came to visit her, and I met my husband. Wow. Right? And just stayed out here. Yeah, and then just stayed out here. And it took a while to, not not too long, but, you know, you slowly get into your community. And then you, I am, I am Melford now. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love it. So what was, the, what was the draw to get on municipal council for yourself? There was a, a wonderful lady that actually approached me in, I think it was 2019, 2018, the year before our election election, I guess, would have been 2020, right? Okay, yeah. So 2019, and she said, you should run for, ma- for council. And I said, yeah, no. I said, I don't think so. I'm not, I'm not smart enough. I, I know people, and I have a love and a passion, and I volunteer a lot, and I'm into a lot of things in our city, but yep. I, don't, I don't know if that's for me. But it was enough of a, a plant. Um, Irene Fryer is the one that did that, and it was enough of a plant of a seed for me to think about it for then a year. And I thought, you know what, absolutely. There needs to be, um, I felt like there was a little bit of a disconnect in communication between um, what was happening at City Hall and the public. And not through fault of council, not at fault of administration. I just think that maybe there's a little bit of a bridge that needs to, to happen so that people can get educated on how they can find the information out that they need to know. Mm. So I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think my, my campaign came was about I wanted to be the voice of people so that they could understand what was going on. Had you considered politics prior to that discussion nope. with Irene? Nope. No. Nope. So four years later, because we're recording this in 2024, mm. first-term councillor, yep. is it what you expected looking back on it? Um, no. What, nope. did you ex- what was the biggest eye-opening experience for yourself over the last four years being a newly elected municipal leader in Saskatchewan? I think the biggest thing was the the way that the board or the council is run. So again with many different hats I sit on many different boards Mm -hmm. and volunteer organizations and we are a working board. So learning that that municipal council we have one employee and that's our city manager. 
we do not direct the public works person on the road. We do not have a, it's not that we don't have a say, but we need to let our, our city admin yeah. know that this is what we want to do and then it's theirs, their job to do it. So, so that was my biggest eye opener, I think. That was pretty, it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, just two seconds. Newcastle. I know. Like, what is the chances that that, like, I, I have asked that question when people say Ontario, and they're like, Newmarket, Mississauga, never Port Hope, Ontario. Not saying Port Hope's not good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Were you on the outskirts or in skirts? Literally bond head bees. I was literally on Lake Shore. Well, not on Lake Shore, but we were on Concession 1 bees in Newcastle. It's called Concession 1. <laughs> Gosh, we used to go to the auctions in the Newton. McGregor's Dallas. auction? Uh, I don't remember. That's the only, that's Frank, the Frank, Frank McGregor, for Stapleton, <laughs> Stapleton, yes, Stapleton auction. Oh there my go. God. There we go. <laughs> so oh my, my family has probably seen your family at uh, Stapleton's 100%, auction house. probably. Because it's an old BIA gas station turned. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. And your downtown. I love you Fort now. Hope downtown <laughs> is amazing. I know we're talking about me for, <laughs> like, seriously. And that's good. That's exactly. That's um, so I want to talk about Meaford as a whole for a second. I'm saying it right. Meaford? No. Mel Melford. No. Melford. Melford. Gotcha. Melford as a whole for a second. I want to ask the simple question. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to preface it by saying this is a conversation between the counselor and myself. Not a motion of counsel, not a direction of counselor, not even a policy of counsel. Understood. In your opinion, yep. what is the biggest challenge facing Melford today? There's a few different ways that I think you can look at that. Or challenges. Yep, challenges. Um, economically, I think we are coming to the, to the point of still needing a lot of workers in our community. So we are needing um, more people to come. Yep. There has been a boom of, of positions available, professional um, and down. And we're on the cusp of... A, gr a lot of great um, things that are being built and are being created in our community. And we need to make sure that when we've got workers to work on these awesome things coming up, we need housing that we're going to be able to do and infrastructure to go to the housing. See, even though I'm a first time counselor, I get it. You know, everybody's screaming for homes, but how about the water and the sewer and the roads to get to that home, right? Like, it's all a, a community package. I think it's really important. So how do you see yourself as council and counselor yeah. in addressing that? Because growth is happening no matter where you look, mm -hmm. but growth is costing a lot more than it was 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Yes. But municipalities are being asked to build more houses, to add more housing to their already existing supply. Yeah. But we just heard uh, a few days ago uh, that $107,000 it takes for a municipality to build one house for infrastructure, roads, right. sewage, water, everything that needs to go to a municipal uh, to a house. But municipalities don't have that. And you're still growing, though. So how do you balance the growth with your community with the people who are in your community now? Because you can't have growth on the backs of people who Absolutely, are struggling. Absolutely, right? And and that's the thing. You can you can say we're going to do all this stuff, but you can't tax the people that are already there yeah. in order to build that stuff. So, so, and I think that's why these conventions like this, the SUMA convention, is really important because we're able to um, collectively come together. And like um, our our president of SUMA, SUMA said, Randy Golden, God bless better. her. I love Randy, and always look at her shoes. Amazing <sighs> shoes. Just saying. Anyways, Randy, 80% <laughs> of Saskatchewan is represented by the people here at SUMA. Yeah. I think that's really important. And she says that every speech because it is so important to mention that. We need to come together and collectively, collaboratively come together and present ourselves to the provincial government to say, one, we need this from you. Um, that ICIP program, I think, is huge. Yeah. Like that trifecta of the federal, provincial, and municipalities working together in order to create this, if you don't have that base, everything is going to falter. So that's important. How do you balance the, because 
Infrastructure is a very macro issue. It's a very big picture issue, but I, I can imagine you get stopped at the grocery store on a regular basis or on a, a reoccurring yes. basis. Like the days of going in and grabbing milk and coming it's home over. is over. It's coming, Ask go and grab kids. milk and then spending 12 <laughs> minutes to discuss 12 things and yeah. then 12 different people. Which I love. Exactly. By the way. And I was going to say, you probably enjoyed that because you wouldn't be here if you weren't, didn't. <laughs> How do you balance the macro issues, the infrastructure issues, with the micro issues that people want addressed in your community? Because if I go to Melford today and I ask 100 people what their biggest issue is, they're going to say potholes. My pothole. water bill just went up. Exactly. Or, potholes, yep. parks, yep. service levels, snow removal, 100%. you name it. You know you have a limited supply of money every year to yep. buy things or to invest into your community. How do you pick and choose the winners and losers at the end of the day because you can't please everyone because you only have a certain amount of money that's a very heavy question right? but it's an important one 100 percent. but that's where it's important to have those 12 minute conversations in the yeah. grocery store i really truly feel that way um i, I own a business in in melford that enables me to be in the public eye so that's also a spot where um, I get lots of questions, and some of them heated, some of them not. Some of them I just, hey, I want to let you know that my water bill just went up 20 bucks. Why? I can't afford this. Or, And then we have to go through and talk about the responsibilities as well of this council and the next council. We can't hide behind stuff that needs to be done or not to be done. There are certain basics. You have to uh, fix water lines or else you're not going to have any water in your house. Right, like even even some of the understanding that do they get it though? Um, once once they, I, I think the majority do. Okay. Once they understand the relationship between having a water infrastructure fee on your water bill that is going to be paying for the really aging water lines that are there, and how that's going to help, and and how we are advocating and pushing for more help from yeah. the the different levels of government to help us with that because it's it's in crisis mode for a lot of cities. And, and towns a lot. So, so uh, uh, as I've been accused on the show on numerous occasions, I only oh. talk about negative things. <laughs> What's the thing you're proud of for Melford? What is the thing that you look at and you say, you know what, we do have our challenges, which every municipality has. I know you're, you might be looking at your clock and saying, oh God, I have, like, <laughs> do you have 20 minutes for this? What is the thing that you look at and say, I, we get it right? We get it right. Um, or you're proud that I am pr- is awesome. I'm so proud of all of the the events, the the activities, the groups, the service groups, the sports groups, the the activities, the um, you know our our, our new uh, slogan is play Melford, right? And uh, that's why I pulled this out cuz we live it, you'll love it. You come come and see the people that come into our Northern Lights Palace for the pool and for Ooh. hockey. I'm telling you the Melford Mustangs right now. <laughs> On a winning streak? Well, Melford Mustangs, this is the, they are in the semi-finals for the Canterra Seeds Cup. And this is, there's three and three right now, which means tonight's game is the deciding factor. Go Mustangs, hopefully by the time 100%. this airs. Hopefully you've won it. And I have faith. There you go. I've got faith in the boys. So so that's the huge, that's the, the big thing, you know. When I first moved here, there wasn't a lot that okay. somebody my age could have done. And now there are diverse things. And I think we're so welcoming. You come into Melfort and we're just, I didn't know you through a hole in the ground, but I was like, hey, there you go. yesterday, right? Yeah. Just making connections and being happy. And so last question, because I realize that we're on a time and you got to get to your next event. But what makes Melfort such a unique place to live, work, and raise a family? We are small enough that I know almost every person that's walking down the street, but we're big enough to have the amenities that I need. We're small enough that my children were able to go to school and grow up in a safe environment, but we're big enough that I was able to buy their clothes and their shoes and their school supplies and anything that I need, I can get in Melford. That small town feeling, and yet we are a city that has more amenities, that is something that's that's awesome. And we've got businesses that need work. So you can come and live there. You can come work there. You can raise your family there. We've got a college there. There's just a huge amount of things in Melford that's perfect. Tara, counselor, thank you so much. Thank you.
We want to thank the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association for inviting us to this year's SUMA convention in Regina, Saskatchewan. This episode would not have been achievable without their support. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of the top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.